minutes. You have 45 minutes left. Got to clean up these rack of lamb because I want them to be perfect for the diners. It's taking me a while because I want all those nasty fibers off. I want clean bones and really be something that is a showstopper. I want to make sure that they're beautiful bite-sized pieces of tartare. So just making sure that they're all even as much as possible. And uh, yeah, just got to get through as much as I can, as quick as I can. You know, when you're making a tartare, I really believe that it separates the home cooks from the real chefs. You have to have impeccable technique. Those knife skills have to be very sharp, very clean cuts. A nice dice, not chopped. Come on, come on. Squab is like red meat. It has to be like blushing red still. All game meats are super lean, so you need to make sure that you cook it very gently, medium rare. But now she's left her squab in the pan, unattended, she's ran into the equipment room. Squab overcooks in seconds. 20 minutes, you have 20 minutes left. Time is uh, not on my side right now. 20 minutes left and all hell has hit the fan. I have way too many things I have not finished. Chef Alvin, how are you? I'm always fine. I'm on this side. How do you feel? Nervous. I feel great about the dish I'm presenting, but it's a matter of getting it done on time. I have a lot of things I still have to do. You want me to get out of here? Sure. Good luck. I took on way too much for this task, and I'm worried I'm not going to get it done. I am a bit worried about my coaching. I'll tell you why. I think he spent too much time Frenching those lambs. He did not do his math properly. It's gonna be tight. I'm not even in the weeds, I'm in the actual swamp. I am struggling to swim out of this. I need to get back on track. The top three home cooks have been given their very own pop-up restaurants. 10 minutes, you only have 10 minutes left. Their guests will be 30 of Canada's most influential food bloggers and the judges. The winner of this challenge will earn the first spot in the finale. The stakes of the semifinal are incredibly high. Beautiful. You gotta make sure these influencers are impressed and like your dish, because what they say can make or break you. Okay. Home cooks, the bloggers, and tastemakers are arriving. Holy cow. Pressure. Do not stop cooking. Even though all these people are arriving right now, I just need to not pay attention to them and do what I need to do. I have a soft spot for Yorkshire pudding, and they look perfect. I can't wait to taste it. The end goal is to work in a restaurant, start at the bottom in the kitchen and work my way up until become the best. There's less than three minutes to go before the servers begin to pick up their plates and deliver them to the influencers. It is wildly intense in this kitchen right now. I can hear commotion going on in front of me. I'm legitimately pouring sweat. My plates are not done yet, and I'm not ready for the servers to come. I don't have time for this. You should all be playing right now! <laughs> Slippery. Sorry. I have to refocus, get organized, and start pumping out plates. He's pushing himself really hard. Push it, folks, push it, push it, push it. 20 seconds, in 20 seconds, the servers will be picking up. Come on, Michael, come on, Andy. Come on, push, 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 push. Service starts now. It's the grand opening of the Home Cooks pop-up restaurants. They better hope their food is ready for its close-up. I'm happy the way mine looks. May the best person win. This is my type of food. It's my family, like, merging into one. I took on a lot with this, but um, I know it's going to taste amazing. At Andy's Halifax Hawker House, the guests have been served his Korean spice Nova Scotian halibut tartare with caramelized kimchi and yuzu curd. Let's dig in. Well, I can tell you one thing. It does look like something that you would get from a hawker stand. But you know, this is a pop-up restaurant. I would like to see a little bit more refinement in the presentation. He loves to work with Asian flavors. I think he's nailed the halibut. I love the flavor of it. However, I think the caramelized kimchi was a mistake. It overpowers the delicate flavors of the halibut. He was a little heavy-handed. He needs to pull back a little bit and find the balance. 
I thought it was very creative, absolutely beautiful plating. The balance between all the texture, the sweet, the salty, the spiciness was amazing. We took pictures, we're definitely gonna share it on our blog, so I think it was great. I would give it a 9.5. The influencers at Becky's UK Gastro Pub are eating her squab two ways with carrot puree, shredded Brussels sprouts, and Yorkshire pudding. I really admire Becky's plating. It's elegant. I like the fact that the sauce is not too heavy-handed. Looks like somebody that has a lot of skill plated this. Let's see the cook on the squab. I would like to see a nice medium rare. That is perfect. It's incredible. Perfectly cooked. Doesn't need much more than just a little bit of salt. It still has great flavor. Look at this, she's got a Yorkshire pudding here. She has some of the jus inside of it. Very smart. I think it's a great idea, but I find the Yorkshire pudding a little dense. It felt like a home-cooked meal, which is what we liked about it, I think. Uh, so the meat, I liked it a lot. It had a nice gaminess to it, but it wasn't as seasoned as I hoped for it to be. The bloggers at Michael's Canadian Comfort Lodge are feasting on his crusted rack of lamb, cheesy polenta, butternut squash confit, and pea puree. You know, plating for Michael has always been his Achilles heel, but with this dish, he has improved immensely. However, some of the influencers did not get the pea puree. And that's a big misstep. Pop-up restaurant is all about first impressions. You cannot be sending dishes out that are missing elements. I'm curious to see this lamb. I'm gonna cut into this lamb and see if he was able to give us a medium rare. Wow. It's uh, not medium rare, that is a rare piece of lamb. I think we were unfortunate to get one that would just be too rare because looking at the cook on the guest lamb, they were perfect medium rare. Well, let's see how it tastes to see if he seasoned the lamb properly. Wonderful depth of flavor. Parsley, the thyme, the pistachio work beautifully with the lamb. Well, let's try the polenta and see if that is seasoned and cooked properly. That cheesy polenta is the star of the show. It just changes it up. It's a little bit of the unexpected, but a nod to great Canadiana comfort. It's presented really well, and the colors pop out, the green, the orange, and something that I want to eat right away. It's so delicious. It's kind of like a little Canadian forest. <laughs> <laughs> it is. If we could all have had the pea puree, that would have been nice. We have a tough decision to make here. Andy's dish is almost too many flavors, too powerful. Becky's dish, slightly under-seasoned in general. And Michael G, he struggled with time management. Who do you think delivered the best? That is the question. Who do you think deserves to be in the finale? I don't want to go on the pressure test. I've never won anything more in my life than this. Definitely took a risk on the flavors. And I hope it worked, but it does make me a little bit nervous. I've only scratched the surface of my cooking abilities. Nothing's gonna stop me.